Welcome to Using the Right Clients and Working Remotely with Business Central. So uh, I'm Matt, uh, worked at Techman for about 14, 15 years now, uh, worked with Navision Nav Business Central for about 21 years. Um, and I currently run our project team from consulting and um, development. So just first of all, uh, just want to check that you can A, hear me and that you can see the screen OK. If you can't, if you put any comments, then I've got Mo standing by who can pick up any um, any issues and help out if there's any uh, problems that you've got around that area. So today's uh, session will go through until three o'clock. Um, there's, I know there's another session at three o'clock, so we won't uh, overrun that. And um, we'll have some question, question time at the end, um, probably five minutes or so. So if you could hold any questions till then, that'd be great. Thank you. So what we're going to cover today, um, quick kind of discussion around working from home. Um, the kind of it's the, the new the new office. Um, looking at the historically what you can and can't do with NAV and Business Central from a remote capabilities perspective. Then we're going to look at the modern clients. So kind of focus where we are today with Business Central and what it offers you in terms of connectivity. Um, and then quickly talk about you know, which, which is the right client. When, when would you use it, the different types of clients in different scenarios? And then any questions at the end. So first of all, uh, the new office. So um, yeah, I, I had a kind of look around um, and it's interesting how the the world has changed from a working from home. Um, various articles kind of highlighting how people have realized that actually this is going to become more of a, the norm. Um, interesting, Garten have done some research saying more, more than two fifths of employees are likely to continue remote working. I can imagine that's at some point not necessarily full time, but um, yeah, it, it's uh, an interesting change in kind of working practices. And, and one of those things you need to do if, if you're changing the model in terms of people working more from home is the technological aspects. Obviously, there's HR and policy things to deal with, but uh, technology plays a big part in this, as we found with things like Teams and, uh, and what we're doing today. So historically, uh, NAV has um, kind of grown into this remote capability. So <clears throat> just, let's just kind of go through the history, the timelines as to what that's given us over the years. So back in the days when it was called Navision, um, typically this was home based connectivity. Um, you know, I, I, I sorry, work based office based connectivity. So I'd, I'd go to the office and fire up my PC in the office and we would work from nav. Um, the IT people had to come around and install it on every everybody's PC. So there's a bit of an overhead as well from, from the IT perspective. Then as we move on, VPN started to become the norm. Um, people started to try and use those fat clients, the old division clients over the internet via a VPN client. Um, not very quick, uh, quite heavy in terms of the technology that it used to use in those days. Um, so it didn't get very far in that kind of scenario, I think could cause some issues. And then it's another element of software that IT have to support as well. Then we get into the realms of thinner clients, so VPNs and Citrix or um, remote desktop servers and so Microsoft kind of RDPs. So this allows you to run um, software on the servers but remotely, it was therefore the speed issue went away. Um, but again, you've got more servers to deal with in terms of remote servers, Citrix servers, VPN clients, Citrix clients. It, 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 it all got very um, convoluted and complex. And also doing that with RD, RDS servers and Citrix servers, it also added some extra cost. So then in 2013, and this has been around for a long time, um, Microsoft uh, released a thing called the One Click Installer. And this allowed you to install um, the client on your PC. And to install it, basically, you'd get a link, a hyperlink from 
um, kind of like your IT people. You click on it and just that one click will install the software and allow you to connect straight through to NAV. Now that was because round about NAV 2013, this, this is when typically the, the amount of data that was going between NAV and the server, the backend server was quite light. <clears throat> so it allowed us to use the client over a wide area, network IO over the internet. Um, it, it would use a, a secure certificate, so it's connecting securely through to your um, backend servers. Beauty of this for the IT people is that if you needed a hotfix installing, they didn't have to come down to everybody's PC. They could just drop it on the server. The next time you log on, that then gets updated. And that technology is available all the way up to Business Central 14, so spring last year. So if you've got on, if you're on any version of NAV from 2013 up to Business Central 14, this technology is there that you can use. It does mean that you've got your um, the, the client installed on your laptop, so you're working on your or laptop or PC, and you know your local Excel and Word and Outlook is all there, so it's all together. Whereas back in the old terminal server days, the remote desktop, it, that would get a bit confusing for some users. There are some limitations, not many, but probably one of the main one is that you can't use the edit and Excel feature um, with the one-click installer. So as we move on in time, um, we get to about Business Central 14, so spring last year, and, and typically NAV 2017 and 2018 as well. Um, what we find is there was more of a, a trend for, for people to put their servers in the cloud. So doing away with some of that overhead in terms of IT, um, but still using the one-click installer to deliver a simple connectivity to the, to the Azure to the kind of hosted environments. IT don't have to be involved. You've got a link to the, your client. You click it, you install it, and off you go. And all the kind of capabilities to update it are there. So that, that's something that is available say, all the way to BC14. Also within BC14, and going back to about 20, NAV 2013 R2, we had the web clients available, the tablet client, and the phone client. So these clients have been around for a while, but it's it's only really about BC 14, maybe now 2018, uh, that these have started to get adopted, mainly because the web client uh, wasn't really up to, up to the same functionality levels as the Windows client. Um, so there were certain key features that were missing and it just, you know, if you were used to Nav, it made it hard to move on to that web client. Um, if you were new to the, um, the whole the whole kind of scene then it was a bit easier because you didn't know what you were missing but um, yeah there's some frustrations that were caused with the web client then you've then got obviously the next level is moving to the cloud-based product where um, it's in terms of the IT team there's virtually zero overhead because Microsoft manages tool for you there's, there's some little elements that from an administrative point of view would be involved with but very little. Um, and from BC 15 onwards, the Windows client disappeared. So one click went away. All we had was the web client, the tablet client, and the phone client. However, the, the, the web client has kind of two ways of getting into it. One is through a browser, and the other is a thing called the Windows app, um, which not many people would know about, but um, I'll kind of go on and, and show you those. And in, in the days of people from going, kind of working from home, um, the likelihood of somebody using their own device is also getting a lot higher. So the ability to go onto your iPad, download the app, put in your credentials and off you go. You're just working and it's secure. Um, it's, it's very attractive to a lot of people. Now you can use those three um, and, and the Windows app applications back on BC14, on NAV2018, 2017, 16, um, as long as they're set up, but the experience on the web client isn't quite there until you get to about BC 15, uh, purely because Microsoft had to do something to move people off the Windows client. So the modern clients then, uh, in terms of where we are today, what we have, let's go and dive in and have a look. 
first of all, let's go into the web client. So logged in here through a browser. I've come in through the Office 365 portal. You don't have to. You can go straight uh, directly in uh, with the link. And um, you know, typical. This is a standard interface. Uh, usual look and feel. This is my role center, my landing page, um, with my menus across the top. I have my profile. So if I go to my settings, I can see I'm logged in as a sales order processor. But I've got others to choose from. If if I have a role that's more relevant to me as a user. Then we have the tablet client. So if I just put this into full screen. So a tablet client uses the same technology to, to issue the information out. Um, but what there is is some understanding of, of the client as to what you're using. So if it understands you're using a tablet, then the interface changes. So it's, it's the same underlying structure and data and functionality. Um, it just displays it in a different way. And in effect, what it's doing is putting most of the uh, the links for buttons, etc., on the left and the right hand side of the screen, because the idea is I'm holding a tablet. My thumbs are either side of the screen and that's where I want to have access. So if I come down the left hand side here, I click on the three dots and that's given me. A list of functionality. And that it basically I'll just come back out of that is this section across here. So rather than it being there, that's now displayed off there. Section down here. Sorry, that's here actually. That was the first bit was here, the actions. Um, the section down here is this uh, menu section across the top. So you get the same functionality on the tablet as you do on the Windows client. You can kind of do everything. But obviously you may not be able to put in a 200 line sales order quite as quickly on a tablet with your fingers as a keyboard and mouse. We've then got the phone client. So if I just bring that over. So the phone client is again an app that you install on your phone. So um, available on iOS if you've got Apple phone or the play, at the Google Play Store for Android phones and you just download it, put in your um, email address and off you go. If, you, if you've got Business Central 14 or previous NAV versions, then there's some setup that we'd need to do on servers and certificates and things like that to make that to make that work. Um, on cloud is is very straightforward. So phone. The front the front kind of part of this is is very similar to you know it's it's the role center it's the tiles. If you look at the bottom. The way that the phone clients now laid out is that the, the um, buttons at the long across the button is because my thumb is kind of down there. But what I can do is scroll across in effect to the different sections of my role center. I've also got the same um, actions area that we saw on the Windows client. I can even go into things like let's go into customer top 10 list. So this is a customer top 10 list report. It's just having a quick think. Always the danger of doing a, um, a demo online when you've got your two kids in the house using your internet. So this is the usual options page you get on the um, on that report. Press the middle button to preview it. That goes off and there's my report. And I can zoom in and see the details of that all on my phone. So there's, there's very little restrictions in what you can and can't do between those different clients. What we've also got is the Windows application. So not many people use this. So this is an app that you download off the App Store. So it's off the Microsoft App Store or the um, Android, Google stores, and this is going to connect you to Business Central, but it's on your PC or your iOS device. But the idea is this is more your typical client that you're going to be using with your desktop. So one thing that 
one criticism I guess the web clients had over the years is is the speed of of input um, compared to the Windows client. I, I do think that's kind of pretty well much gone now. So I'll sh I'll give you an example. I'll go and create a sales order, and let's say customers the London Light Company, and they want this on the twenty fourth of April. Take their PO number. What do they want to order? Uh, three of those, please. One below one. Four of those, please. And 1,600. Yep, I'll have seven of those. Let's release that. Bang, order done. So what enabled, uh, enabled me to do that quick? There was a couple of features. So I'm going to personalize the screen. First thing is on each field, I can personalize what I see on the screen and little arrow gives me the ability to choose whether a field is included in quick entry. So that means when I press enter on the keyboard, I can decide which fields it jumps to. So I had the customer name, the requested delivery date, their order number, part number, quantity, part number, quantity, part number, quantity. And it means that I can then enter though that information really quickly. There's also a lot of function keys and shortcuts in there as well. You've you've got to have your your Techman mouse mats to be able to know them all. Um, Control F9, for instance, releases it. So that enabled me to when I finished it. Control F9, order released, orders complete. So there's some very powerful features that's been put in there, and the features that were missing, all of the features that were weren't in the web client and were in the in the traditional Windows client have now been included and they've added more features as well. So some of the um, other kind of visual features you get within within the, the um, web client, Windows client, this this is the app, it's kind of using the web, web client in the background, um, things like focus mode. So I've got a sales order and you'll all recognize this if you've got sales or purchase orders where you've only got a certain amount of lines. I've got this little button here now called focus mode. And there is a shortcut for it as well, a shortcut key. I'll press that. And that now gives me a nice screen full of space if I have lots of lines to enter. Really useful. The amount of times over the years we've, we've had to extend those screens to allow for that. Um, if I just come back out of here, go into a customer list. Things like um, things you'd expect. So column widths you couldn't do this a couple of versions ago um, I can just double click on the column width and it'll just auto size it kind of like what you'd expect in Excel so Microsoft are very much trying to align the, the kind of feel to very traditional Microsoft products another feature which you could do in the Windows client is Actually, it's in the web client. Uh, I can see where the web client is. There you go. If I go and open up a customer. So let's say I want to compare this customer to another customer. Then quick sh keyboard shortcut. What that will do is in effect, open up another web browser with that data, and I can then go and take another customer, and I can then do a, a kind of side by, choose the wrong one, and do a side by side. Oh, it is, yeah. You can do a, it was right. I can do a side by side comparison between those two on screen. So in effect, have multiple windows open, which is something that the web client originally didn't offer um, in its early days. Microsoft have also added in kind of like the departments menu that we used to have with um, the Windows client. So these little dots up here takes me to what's called the role explorer. So this is everything that I can do in my role. And I've also got the ability to explore all. So if I want to go and look at particular functionality that I've got access to, so this is all, this is all permission based. Um, 
that if I want to go in there and start looking at additional things, then I can go in and drill down and look at that in here. When I'm on a list of data, if let's say I want to look at those customers that are in the location yellow. Um, so again, this is web client mirroring what the Windows client used to do. Um, probably a little bit more advanced now is that I can put on my filters and I can say, OK, location code of yellow. So that's now obviously done a filtered list. Been able to do that for a long time. I can also save that now and call it, I don't know, yellow customers. So that's now saved that the not only the um, the filter, but also if I if I decided I wanted to have different column layouts, it would also save that, and it puts it into a nice little kind of drop down up here to be able to get access to later on. Another nice little feature I've got is if there's something that I do occasionally, so let's say um, I'm in sales, but some for some reason I occasionally do a general journal. Then I've got a little uh, icon up here called bookmark. So I can bookmark that and I say, yeah, I want to use that a bit more regularly. And now what I've got on my menus is that it's added um, that straight to my menu up here. So again, it's something you used to be able to do back on the older um, kind of, I think it was version five um, to be able to create your own menu structures in 2009, I think as well, but um, that's now back in there and it's nice and simple and nice and kind of obvious in terms of how that works. The other important thing as well, so a really important thing within the application is, is roles. So the role that I'm using, um, the ability to customize those roles has, has, has really been enhanced as well. So they call them profiles, but if I wanted to create a new one, then I can just say, okay, I'm going to create a new one, call it, I don't know, my team. And I can copy, let's say, the uh, no, hang on, that's doing it the other way around. Sorry, I should have copied it first. But in effect, what it allows me to do is go into the application from the customizing of that um, profile. And it's in um, customization kind of mode now. So everything that I do here in terms of hiding fields, if I want to go, let's say, and go into the customers list and see what my set of users would use, I can say, well, I don't want that field. So actually, let's let's hide that and let's go and you know, we don't want that particular fact box, etc. So the whole interface I could go through and fine tune in terms of the way that I would want my team to use. And when I've finished, that then saves all of that against the, the my team. And then I can now uh, close that. And that's now created an effect, my that own personal role sense that I can then give to other users. That's a really powerful one because I think the the use of the roles and the profiles is so important for people to understand. Um, the best use of the application. OK, that's some of the, the kind of general look, look and feel, different kind of types of interfaces that we have. Um, so which one's the right one? So that's always the question. So I've put some kind of views as to when and where. So the phone client typically, I think, will be when you're out and about. So not necessarily at home, not necessarily in the office. Um, maybe in a meeting, you want to just check a quick number in a meeting, um, but it's not your day to day client, um, just purely because of the size. And, uh, and that's what it's designed for is the is the ad hoc view and uh, ad hoc um, inquiry into the system. And maybe put, the, you know, you're out and maybe you want to stick a sales order on and just post a journal that you forgot to do. It, it, it's, it's more than capable of doing that. I think in the more kind of relaxed areas at home, um, especially when we're working from home. I know Liam's in the garden, I think, at present. Um, you'd probably be there with your tablet. 
and um, yeah, you can do more on a tablet than you, you, you that you'd want to do on a phone. You can do you can do everything on either device, uh, but it's it, what's realistic and what you'd prefer to do. So, tablets is is doing a bit more heavier work, a bit more involved, um, but you know the screen size and, and, and etc lends itself to a bit more intensive working. Then at the, the home office, then you're into the Windows client, uh, the Windows app or the web client, whichever you have access to, depending upon the version. If you are on older NAV versions, so um, I think it's from about 2015, there is a NAV app that you can install as well as a Business Central app. Um, so it is backwardsly compatible in terms of these kind of applications. So that's the kind of the general um, overview as to where I think we should be um, using the applications and when, when when it's most appropriate. Obviously, in the office, you can um, still use the Windows application or either the older Windows for NAV stroke BC14 or the modern uh, Windows app um, that we've just been using. So what we've looked at is a quick discussion around some of the changing world around working from home. The, the history of connectivity with, with NAV and BC. Uh, then we've looked at the modern clients as to where we are today and a kind of brief overview of some of the features that it really is that is just a very light touch on some of those features. Um, and then a quick discussion around the right clients for the right uh, appropriate use.